Hey, Julian Kras here, and this is the U-Mic 1 USB measurement microphone from Mini DSP. Let's have a closer look. So the U-Mic comes in this small box, and in there you will also find some additional accessories. You get a 2 meter long USB cable, a mic holder, which can be attached to a tripod or stand, a mini desk stand, and a mini foam wind cover. Some of these accessories are quite nice to have, especially the mic holder, because you will have to mount the mic on a stand to position it correctly for your measurements. The microphone itself is made out of pretty thick metal and it has quite some heft to it. It comes in at about 116 grams and it feels surprisingly well built. On the microphone you can find an LED, which lights up when the mic is connected to a computer. At the bottom of the mic you got a mini USB port and there is also a sticker on the mic on which you can find the serial number. This serial number is going to be important later on because we will need a calibration file that is specific to this particular microphone. As I mentioned, the U-Mic is a USB measurement microphone, so you can directly hook it up to your computer without the need of additional audio hardware like an audio interface. Everything you need to make your measurements is already contained in this microphone. And hooking it up to a PC is really easy, because the U-Mic 1 is USB audio class 1 compliant, it does not need any additional drivers. Regardless if you're using Windows or Mac, when you plug in the microphone, it is automatically recognized by the system and it is ready to use. Okay, let's have a look at the frequency response of the microphone. Sadly, I currently do not have the equipment to test the real frequency response of the microphone myself, but we can have a closer look at the calibration file, which gives us a pretty good indication of the frequency response. I guess I should shortly explain what exactly this calibration file is and what it is needed for. Well, a perfect measurement microphone would have a frequency response that is absolutely flat. This means that the microphone is equally sensitive to all frequencies. In a frequency response graph it would look like this. Expensive measurement microphones are very close to that and they of course do not need a calibration file. Now, even though the manufacturer of the U-Mic 1 tries to make it as flat as possible, the frequency response will not be perfect and it might also differ slightly from mic to mic. And this is where the calibration file comes in. The frequency response of each individual microphone is tested. This way the manufacturer can see by how much the microphone's response deviates from a totally flat response and can then create a calibration file that in combination with this microphone will lead to a flat frequency response. So the calibration file essentially just contains the microphone's frequency response. And you will see that the frequency response of the U-Mic is not perfectly flat out of the box. You do need to use the calibration file specific to your microphone in order to make accurate measurements. Like I said in the beginning, to get this file you have to have your microphone's serial number. Then you can go onto MiniDSP's website and there you can enter the serial number for your microphone and then download the file. You will actually get two calibration files, one normal one and one for 90 degrees. The normal one is used if the microphone is pointed directly at the speakers. This is typically done in 2.0 or 2.1 systems. And the 90 degree one is used if the mic is pointed towards the ceiling. This is often used for calibrating surround systems with speakers all around the microphone. Okay, let's have a small look at the calibration file. I plotted the file into a graph and if the calibration file is accurate, then this should be the frequency response of my particular microphone. As you can see, the frequency response is not perfectly flat. My mic is slightly boosted in the low frequencies and it has a 3 decibel spike at around 8 kHz. Again, this underlines the importance of the calibration file. Without this file you will not be able to make accurate measurements, because the real frequency response of the U-Mic 1 is far from flat. One more thing I had a look at is the noise floor. When making my first measurements I quickly noticed that the noise floor of the U-Mic 1 is relatively high. This means that when measuring very quiet stuff you could run into problems. For measuring audio systems, the noise floor is typically not that critical, but you should definitely make sure that the sound source 
is producing a decent sound pressure level to get readings which are not influenced by the noise floor of the U-Mic 1. I measured the noise of the U-Mic 1 and it is about 32 dB SPLA weighted. I also had a closer look at more expensive measurement microphones and they ranged from about 25 dB SPL down to 10 dB SPL. So 32 dB SPL is definitely on the higher side. Again, for frequency response measurements, this is typically not that critical because if you would measure your audio system, you usually sweep the system with a sound pressure level at the measurement mic of around 70 to 80 dB SPL. This way, your measurement is about 40 to 50 dB above the noise floor of the U-Mic 1. I also want to point out that the noise floor of the U-Mic 1 increases a bit in the lower frequencies. So if you measure low frequencies, you have to make sure that the measured signal is loud enough to be significantly above the noise floor. Okay, enough about the noise of this mic, let's talk about something more positive, and that's the sound pressure measuring capabilities of the U-Mic 1. Because the calibration file also incorporates an SPL calibration, you can accurately measure the sound pressure level of a signal, without the need of a separate sound level meter. I think this is great, because you can not only make relative measurements, but for example when you measure a frequency sweep, you can see the real sound pressure level your audio system produces at a given frequency. While we're on the topic of sound pressure level, the U-Mic 1 can handle up to 133 dB SPL according to the manufacturer. But I have to add that this is only the case if you set the gain on the U-Mic 1 to 0 dB. Normally it is set to 18 dB and then the maximum sound pressure level of the U-Mic 1 is about 120 dB SPL. To change the gain on the U-Mic 1 you would have to open it up, but it is screwed and also glued shut. I mean, some people have got it open, but personally I wouldn't risk it. So you're pretty much stuck on 18 decibels of gain. This means that you cannot measure signals which are louder than 120 dB SPL. For the most part this isn't a problem, because this is already a very high sound pressure level and it is absolutely fine for frequency response measurements. But for example if you want to measure the SPL capabilities of your subwoofer, 120 dB SPL might not be enough, so keep that in mind. One thing I found very positive is how easy it is to use the U-Mic 1. I personally use it in conjunction with RoomEQ Wizard and this software instantly recognizes the connected U-Mic and asks you for the calibration file. After you've loaded in the file, you're good to go and you can make your measurements, no further calibrations needed. And by the way, the U-Mic can be used with all kinds of software like Direct RCS, Fuzz Measure Pro V4, Amara Symphony and according to the manufacturer you can even use it on an iPad with some apps. I only used the mic with REW, but so far it really was a plug and play experience for me. And I think this is actually the big selling point of this measurement microphone. The tech specs like noise and SPL handling might be a bit worse than XLR based measurement microphones, but the usability is the one point where this mic really shines. If I had to find something to complain about, it would be the mini USB port on the back of the mic. The connector just barely holds in the cable and if you tug on it just slightly, it pulls right out. So something like a USB Type-C connector would have been a much better choice here. Still overall I quite like the U-Mic 1, I think it is very easy to use and you're getting a lot of value for your money. If you want to know how to make audio measurements with the U-Mic 1, subscribe to my channel to not miss out on my upcoming tutorial and if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. As always, I will see you in the next one.